Friends forever. What's up and welcome to the Fervent Four. Did you know that only one, two, three, four percent of businesses ever cross the annual million dollar revenue mark? Hello, I'm Zach Miller, author of Anomaly. With me today, I'm my co-host Tim Ryan, lead man at startreal.org. Thank you so much for joining us. The Fervent Four is a weekly show, yep, each and every week on Thursdays at 11 a.m. dedicated to sharing insights into growing a world-class business no matter the climate. Elizabeth Duncan Hawker, a.k.a. the Red Hawk, is the queen of collecting true friends. I think I've been what? just given a title. I love that. Collect the, I'm the queen. I got queenhood. Regina. I <laughs> okay. okay. Well, you know, I'm a big <laughs> wrestling fan. They always put some sort of like uh, descriptor around people to do it. So there's this lady named Charlotte Flair. They call her the queen. Yep. I wrote it down, man. I've got my title. I'm going to get my belt next. Uh, I'm getting my belt. The belt, <laughs> well, the belt is like. Right, Smash on me. I see it. Um, <laughs> Get and then I can it. have my masquerade with it too, right? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We're, We're getting, getting real, you know, there you go. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, we've never had a mask on the show, at least not that kind of mask. Usually it's covering <laughs> the mouth, I guess. That's right. Um, so it's changed. Um, but the Red Hawk, the Red Hawk is something that's interesting. I think it's, a, it, it, it's, I feel like when I first met you, you didn't go by that. I wasn't then, named that. You weren't you yet. All, you all named me the community. Yeah. Oh, that's not your spirit animal? It, well, no. it is her spirit animal. I mean, that's her mask on and everything. With, but, like, explain the whole thing with Red Hawk. Because I feel like where I have, like, that, like people look at me and be like, okay, Zach, the, the jeans and the T-shirt kind of guy. Like, you knew what you were going to get. You were kind of right, – well, Tim is, like, the running man, I think people would say. Maybe the best hair in Hampton Roads. You that's are the Red Hawk. How, how did how did the Red Hawk come about? It, so that's that's hilarious because I used it as a branding technique. So Red Hawk is a derivative from my last name, Duncan Hawker. And when I had to name the business and go out to do consulting and the niching and speaking, I was like, well, I'd love to do something because if you can see me on camera, we've got the red mane that goes with it. Right. So everybody has called me red for years. And I was like, Red Hawk, that works. But what I didn't expect Zach and Tim was the community so when I started going out into the events and started meeting people and everything, they would actually turn around and go, hey, the Red Hawks here. Yeah. And I went, I am. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we just have to like go with what people, because it was a good thing. It was a good. But you had named your started name, telling yourself that and the people yeah. had started remembering yeah. it. They no, just, they, the community named me that they said Red Hawk because they because they saw Red Hawk Strategic Solutions as my business. And they saw me and said, the Red Hawk's here. And so then I started introducing myself as, hey, guys, I'm the Red Hawk. And I put it on LinkedIn and and, and, and it became like a good tagline. It's fun. Yes. Please oh, call her the cute. Red Hawk. Hi, not, not, <laughs> now, but Red Hawk is one word or two. I do. It's two words right now. But oh, okay. then I, on my uh, club, clubhouse too, Zach, for example, I grabbed the Red Hawk as the, as the handle on that. So I'm starting to use it more as a social media thing too. So the hmm. or no the? Well, on there, Red Hawk was taken. So I had to take the Red Hawk. Oh, well, you know, there's this guy, uh, Sean Parker, a.k.a. Uh -huh. Justin Timberlake. He says, remove the the. Yeah. Yeah, That's that from would the be social nice. network Facebook. Someone network. got ahead of me, Doug, on it. <laughs> That's weird. I, I would not anticipate someone taking red. <laughs> I know, right? Right. And then it was funny because I actually networked with another guy that I found, and his name of his company was very similar to mine. And I reached out and I went, Wow. Okay. Like you should just like let me have it and you shouldn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> Not very, very nice guy, but he, it didn't tie into anything. It wasn't branded. It was just like, yeah, I like the bird. And I was like, oh man, but like, you know, I've got the red hair and the community knows me as this. So, you know, so of domains were a big thing where people were buying domains. I was just going to bring at, that at some up point. Too. Are social handles like a thing that people are buying? Cause like, I, I cannot stand. And Elizabeth, if you do this, I, I'm ripping into you. Okay. And Tim, if you do this, I'm going to rip into you. When people have their uh, their kind of like their handle, so like a Facebook handle, their Twitter handle, their clubhouse handle, all these things, and they're like 17 different things. Yeah, like I, the, I, that the, makes the, me the crazy. The consistency is like so silly to me. It's like 
your domain and every single one of your handles must, and I mean it's must, same. be the exact same thing. Because yep. to get someone to go back and to remember, to recall, yep. to recite, to type the exact letters that they need, it's like, oh, well, was that on Instagram? Oh, was that on oh, where? Right. Making well, all this thing. So are people yeah, buying? Is that what you're going to say? Are well, no, I was just going to, I was going to jump. Can I jump on my soapbox for just a second? Please, please. All right. Can just, you stand up a, on it? Like, don't sit yeah, down. Right? No, come on. Let, let's see it. I, but I mean, yeah, I mean, someone is, is trying to help out the community and share the story of everything that's going on. When I pick up different news pieces that take place of all the good work the founders are doing, and then I have to go around and then I have to search all the different try to find all the different social media handles so that I can tag them appropriately. And it becomes a scavenger hunt that, you know, a lot of times I just give up and they just don't get tagged. And, you know, and I really want to give them annoying. a free shout out. Yeah. It's, it's annoying. And I know. And a disservice like, to these what companies. I'm, what I'm yeah. seeing is that some people, cause like I have a different handle between Instagram and, and it wasn't by design mm -hmm. by Instagram and Clubhouse it. because they didn't have it. Well, if somebody takes your thing, then you can't you can't grab it. So something next to it. Uh, but my point is, is that I'm seeing people that are going back and then they're like then saying, OK, then they're going to come up with the one and then they're changing all the platforms. But when they do that, then they lose the thousands of people that are following them. You know, so that account's already built because like on Instagram, because I looked at it, if you change that, you can't. I don't believe you can change. Can you? I don't think you can change your title name. Well, if you if someone asks you again, you it would go at least it used to it would it would go to a page not found. So, but That's you know, what? I'm glad you're bringing this up because I want to talk about social media. So, can I jump in and talk about that with friendships? Yeah, my my soap. My, I'm I'm off my soapbox. Well, okay. tell, 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 let, but let, let's let's uh, as a good journalist, as a good guy, I, I I start the story up so we can understand who you are first, and then yeah. we'll get into it. So, it's, yeah. so friends friendships you know a lot of people talk about those things collecting two friends uh true friends the author of that this fancy little book i always like to show that there are words in books uh there isn't always in my book no words i it's just just 200 pages of nothing no, uh, it's, a good book. it's a good book a little what i've read it i know there's words in there because i highlight it all the way through mm, it fake news um <laughs> the I always make myself laugh when I use those two words together. I don't know why. Uh, okay, so for, just define friendships for us. So a friend is somebody that you know has your back. A friend is someone that you know that you want to be with. Maybe not right at the moment. Maybe something's not going great in their life. But over the long term, you get more energy and have a better exchange over a period of time. A friend is somebody who gets you and likes you who you are and they don't want you to change except they want you to be better. So your friend is the person that's going to say, Hey, have you considered this? Or like, for example, with my friends, they kept pushing me to get the book out. They're like, do it, do it. And I'm like, I've never been an author before. And they're like, do it. So a friend is somebody that pushes you out of your comfort zone, but by the same token, they wrap their arms around you and say, it's okay. Don't be afraid. That's to me is what a really great friend is. And a true friend is the person over time. Is that it easy then, to understand and recognize that as it's going on? Or I think a lot of people have like associates. You don't, you don't always. And that's where like uh, Zach with the, and that's why I said, be a, and the subtitle of the book is be a magnet to those worthy of your time and devotion. Because we don't know who's going to start out being a casual acquaintance. Like, like when you and I met and Tim met, we were, we were colleagues. We, we knew each other through business. Friendships develop out of it, but that's if we are a magnet to others that are worthy of the time and devotion, then what happens is then eventually people go, you know what? I like that person more than just a colleague or a, or a networking buddy. They're my friend now. And then you can call them up and they'll take your calls, right? So, so I think that's the hardest part though, what I've noticed, and that's why I wanted the book to get out now was because people are hurting is that they have overlooked so many opportunities to collect friends and then convert them into true friends because they just thought, oh, well, I just worked with that person or I just did soccer or they were in my running club or I saw them at the gym or they're my wife's, you know, coworker, but they could have been amazing friends and they miss it. In your opinion, Elizabeth, how many friends or how many true friends 
can one person have before it gets to be too much? Well, that's funny you ask that, Tim, because I disagree with one of the biggest studies there is. So Dunbar, D-U-N-B-A-R study, indicates that we, ha we can have about 150 close people in our world. And I don't agree with that, because if you think about that, that's taking 15 years. If you look back in 15 years, that's saying that I could have only brought 10 people in. And then so 10 times 15 would be 150 people. So it would mean that I would be like flushing out a whole bunch of people in my life to make room for the new people. So I, my, in my opinion, it is what's your capacity. And in the book, I talk about bandwidth. And I didn't, it was funny because when I was using that term, because we all know that in business, but it, you know, I wasn't sure if people would knew that, know that in a personal thing, but it, it depends on what you're comfortable with. But my bandwidth can hold a lot because I can pace people and I can say, I really want to catch up with you, but this is a busy month, but I'll send them some love on a text or like, or like uh, Zach loves to send audio texts and different, you know, different modes. So I'll stay in touch with them, but then I'll catch up with them in person. So the answer is what you feel comfortable with and then grow some, because most people say, well, I'm, I'm good with only like three close friends. That's not enough. And you got to look over time in my opinion, and say, okay, I got three close friends right now and say, I'm 40 years old. Okay. But what are you going to do when you get 50? Cause 50 is going to be around the corner soon here. And if you don't do something to make sure you seed in some new people that you like in your life, and then you get out of those sports or recreations or neighborhood, or you move, or you're not doing that anymore. Those three close friends, maybe only one of them is going to really like who you are. Because like in my case, I'm an entirely different person than I was 10 years ago. I'm not the corporate exec anymore. I'm not hanging with W2 people, as I call them, you know, people that are working for a living. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a speaker. I'm a trainer. I'm an author now. My whole world is different. But the people that got to stay my friends were the ones that were okay with that. I did have some friends who were like, what are you doing? And that's where Zach and I actually met because I did a speech for him. I told him I, when I first met him, I said, so many of my corporate high paying people friends think that I've lost my ever love and mine going out here. And he's like, that's, that's good. Come do your talk. So I did a talk on leap of faith going from being a W2 to a 1099. And your friends have to get that you're not going to be the same person. And if you are with people, and I'll, I'll share this out here too. If you're with people that are in your life and you want to try something new, no matter what it is, I mean, you may want to try, you know, rock climbing, or you may want to uh, garden. I mean, it could, whatever you're interested in, right. And your friends look at you and they go, what are you doing that for? Why would you do that? Right. Or just come over with us and hang out and watch the game. You need to really question if that's the person that's going to push you forward. Is it a jealousy thing in that case? Or is it like that they're just jealous or like, how, how, how do you, That's because I think there's a, there, there's a difference between, I think we've all seen this, right? I don't know why I did that. Like, stop, stop right stop there. Stop in the name of love. I think there's a <laughs> difference between like common courtesy to like be worried about you yes. in a way. Like a safe repelling rock wall compared <laughs> to being like, go do this thing. Right. So like there, there is a difference in that thing. Um, and maybe there, maybe it's de depending on the extreme of it, but like, where do you see that that person isn't actually in your corner, mm -hmm. but they're actually uh, against you in that case? Cause I could see people just being concerned saying, Hey, I'm worried about you doing that thing. It seems to be a little ridiculous that you think that you can just all of a sudden go climb Mount two or K two, whatever it's called. Right. With with no uh, you know physical uh, work towards that because I feel like that's something that it takes a while to get towards right. Where 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 do you see that kind of difference of jealousy, common courtesy, actual love for that person, and actually just the person being a complete tool when you need to get them out of your life? I love that complete tool. Well, the the thing I like to do though is ask a little bit more. And so and you're and you all are the the reporters here. But so I like to ask them and go, okay, I'm picking up that you don't understand what I'm trying to do here. So could you give me a little bit of idea? Am I missing something or what's your concern for me? And then it's interesting because sometimes Zach and Tim, what the person does, and they've done this to me because I run, I mean, my, my speed of light is like, okay, we're ready, set, go. And sometimes those people will bring, their friends will say something and then they'll, and I'll go, oh, 
crud. I hadn't thought about that. So asking them why they're concerned or asking, because I can usually with, with me, because I'm so high energy, they'll turn around and they'll say, well, it's Elizabeth because we don't want to see you burn out. We don't want to see you take on too much. We know we we've seen you're just running, running, running. You need to have some downtime. So are you, are you, are you taking, are you doing your self-care? Are you resting enough? And then I'll go, Oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I need to get some more sleep. But if it's the person that then says, because, and then they want to put the seeds of fear in there, Zach, that's your, that's the clue to people. So if, if you're, if your gut and your mind and your head are going, they're trying to put seeds of fear in me because they're afraid. They've never written a book. They've never started a business. They've never uh, moved out of state. They've never started a savings account and got a retirement. They've never done anything except what they were comfortable doing. Then don't let those may not, like you said, they may be a tool. They may be somebody that was great where you were at initially, but are they holding you back? Because we've got to have people in our life that make us better. I mean, I would never have gotten my master's if one of my best friends since I was 14 had turned around and said, hey, over here at this university, you can we can go do this and we can do it in the evening school. And that was decades ago. And I was like, we could. And I had three kids at the time and a husband and working 60 hour corporate. But I knew if I didn't get my master's, I wouldn't make the six figures and get to the next place I wanted to be. And I went, holy cow. And she figured it out. Did she continue to do it? No, she bailed on it. But I got my master's with it. But she inspired me to get there. If it if she hadn't been in my life to do that, I probably wouldn't have my master's today. My career wouldn't have taken where it was. So who are the people that make us better? That's it. we need those in our life, but not the ones that plant the seed capsules, because those things sprout. They like come out of your ears, <laughs> your head. Like you're like, oh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do it. <laughs> Are you stuck at your home office, socially distanced coffee shop, or your fancy all bricked out corner office, wondering why no one can see your business and sales are all over the place? Sounds like you need a pro. That's why I developed the Anomaly Academy. Insert clever copy here. Oh, I guess I was supposed to put something else there. Oops. You can grab access to the Anomaly Academy now at ZachMillerSays.com slash Anomaly Academy.